start. So my original plan was to give a talk in Korean, but I changed my mind. So I'm going to give a talk in English, but I try to speak slowly. So, so like if you question, okay, ask me in Korean, I can understand that. Okay. So talk title, Starvation-Driven Diffusion as a Survival Strategy of Biological Organisms. And then one, one thing I want to talk to students is this, let your curiosity guide your research. That's one thing. And this talk is also about my curiosity related to the, some dispersal of uh, biological organisms. So, okay. Now I'm, so this talk is mostly about the dispersal. Okay, so there's a biological organisms here. Now they eat and no food. You have two choices. Just stay, stay there and die. Or move around to find the food. So that's the dispersal, so definitely this person is a survival strategy. And so I think that's very important. So this person, so there can be many kinds of this person. Okay, here I want to, we want to consider just the random one. So animals move around to find the food in a random way in many cases. So, so we already saw that situation from Professor Mimura's talk a lot. Now, the need of food or mating causes a huge jump in motility of uh, all, the, all the species. And such a change is the key to understand the role of dispersal. So that, that's the point of this talk. And there are many examples, and I think they, they call this dicti, kind of social ameba. So they eat food, and then if there is no more food, then what they do is they congregate and form a stock-like formation. And the top part, if a chance is coming, then this top part just disperses away. So that's one way to increase the this, well, motility when there is no food. And I probably, this is something you never heard, and I, I also heard this one for the first time, and that's a, a, a little, a, a kind of a species, a little bit more, a lot more complicated than the dictated ameba. Ameba is just one cell animal, one cell organism, but this, this one is a lot more complicated, but it's still tiny. If they have no food, they transform to certain way. It's a, the dicti also transform to, to, to different shape. And this kind, this thing, I don't know how to read this one. Anyway, some elegance. Then they transform into some, some way, and then it, after that, they can survive 10 times longer without food. And they become longer. So if there is a flies coming, away, coming, then they just attached to that and then move far away. So in that way, they increase their motility a lot when they are starved. Another example, this one is what, what you know very well, uh, desert locust, 사막 메뚜기들. So if there is no food, then they come together and they, they what, massage to each other and then they turn into different shape of locust. And then after that they can travel a lot. Then, then they all together they travel all through the continent. That's the one way to increase, transform to another shape and increase their motility. And this one is uh, Platella germanica. All right, and this is the German cockroaches. 
I heard this one from Professor Mimura, his paper. And then this one, so, so this is not a starvation driven. They are different. They produce some kind of pheromones. And if they sense it a lot, then they reduce their motility a lot. So they move slowly. And if they don't sense it, they just move around. Okay, all the random movement, but the, the strength is changed a lot depend on environment. So that, that's the case. So I have two questions. I probably I'm going to spend a lot of most of my time doing these two. How to model random movement? Okay, that is just a regular one. Everybody prep understand that. I'm going to talk about that again. And then how to include such a motility change. That's two, two, two different things. <coughs> okay, so I'm, let's talk about that. And then I'm going to use chalk. So to under the first question, how to model the random movement? That's the first one, and everybody, that, that, these things are well known, and Professor Memra also used this one a lot, and then I'm going to explain why, what is that. So, it is 1855, Adolf Fick. Okay, what he did? He, he found something interesting. So, so he, this is a water tank. Okay, there is a water inside. Now put some salty water or some salt inside there. Okay, and then this, uh, for example, that U is the concentration. Of salt. Okay, what he found is uh, if you wait a long time, eventually, even if there is no, no flow, right, no velocity of the water, eventually it dispersed away and this density becomes a constant. Okay, that's a diffusion. So, he, to, to explain that, what he suggests is a, a diffusion flux. F equal minus some constant D gradient of U. You can just think that this diffusivity d is just a scaling coefficient. And also he says that this is some constant depending on the property of a material. Okay, so he explained that. And then, okay, according to the conservation law, you already know that conservation law is this one. U sub t equal minus divergence of flux. Now here is minus, here is minus, now t is a constant, you can easily see that this one is the Laplacian of u. Okay, so, so that's the diffusion. And many people, sometimes people call that the heat equation is also diffusion equation. Oh, no, 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 don't do that. That's a conduction, that's a completely different. This is a diffusion. And basically what Fick did is just he's mimicking Fourier's law of conductivity. Right? But his uh, originality is somehow he view this diffusion in a way of the heat conduction. So that, that's what his, uh, his uh, contribution, I think. And one thing you have to realize is that this kind of explanation is a phenomenological explanation. There is no physics. We, they, they do not, he did not know why this happens. But it, he knows that this one explains it. So we call this a phenomenological explanation. Okay, that's one thing. The, the other thing is uh, 50 years later, 1905. This is Albert Einstein. That's, uh, this is mostly uh, his work. So he, Einstein's view was very kind of genius. Somehow he said that, why this happened? He thought that that's because of the Brownian motion. And he said Brownian motion. And, and his genius is also, he saw this Brownian motion 
in a random walkway. So, so I told him random walk, random. Random walk and Brownian motion, that's the same thing. Then in the Brownian motion, when people do it, okay, for example, let's watch the delta S. Delta is a mean free path, mean free path. And then if you think this one in the, in the random way, okay, what is this? This one is the walk length. Now let's delta T is some traveling or collision time, mean collision time. So, okay, let's uh, mean collision, okay. Uh, I just I did. Then th this means the, the, the traveling time for a particle to move uh, this distance. That's that. And then if you look at this one, the random walk, great. So this one is kind of a jumping time. And what Einstein found is uh, diffusivity D is given in this way. 2 and t. What that mean? This means suppose a particle starts from the origin and this one is moving, moving around for this amount of time. Now what is that? That is the variance of the probability d distribution of the particle. And 2 here is n, n is just a dimension. So, okay, this is one. So in this way, somehow you already saw, saw in the in previous lectures that time t and x squared they are comparable this t and delta x squared and also and and his observ so his theory is this quantity is independent of time t okay that's the point so if you take this delta this t as small as this, then this one is just the square of that. So this one can like to n delta t. And this is also called Einstein's relation or Einstein's small loss Chosky relation. Okay. This is one thing. Okay, let, let's see. Uh, you already saw, saw, saw this one many times. Now there is a thermodynamics. Another thing he did is thermodynamics. He somehow related this one to thermodynamics. That's also his genuity. Okay, so, so thermodynamics, so he sh claimed that this diffusivity D is given in by, by this Kb times T, temper, T, capital T is temperature, this one is a Boltzmann coefficient. Now, 2n pi eta r. So r is the radius of the Brownian particle, eta is the viscosity of the fluid, and at dimension pi, okay, that's D. And also, there is, this, he also, uh, he's in his theory, he's something called equipartition theory. He claimed that, that 1 over 2 mv squared, so v is the particle velocity, now m is the particle mass, and this one should be same as uh, 3 over 2 kbt. And this one is called uh, equipartition theorem. Okay, so, so, so his theory is some Somehow he showed that diffusivity, diffusion is given by Brownian motion, and then thermodynamics also design gives this diffusivity. And he, he if they, his suggestion is if people do the experiment, if and then they can find the, the radius of the particle. At the time, people know, some people, there, there's a kinetic theory is already developed by the Maxwell and Boltzmann at, at that time, but even they did not take the theory of the molecules or kinetic theory literally. So, so they was not even sure if the, really the particle or atom or molecule exists. 
task. So he saw some, he suggested this kind of a theory, and uh, if you do the experiment, then you can s measure the size and the number of particles. So that's the that's wonderful theory. And many years later, Perrin really to did this kind of check the experiment and show that there really exist atoms and molecules. So because of that, what? Really people start to believe kinetic theory. Okay? Now what I'm trying to do is derive this one. And this der derivation is also essence of my talk. So derivation. How to derive this kind of diffusion law with this, this diffusivity for the random walk. Okay, let's do, do that. Let's just, when we people do random walk, the, the, let's point this is xi minus 1, xi, let this is xi plus 1. And so all the particles are jumping along this uh, node. Okay? Now the, the, the distance between these two is delta x corresponding to the, that delta x. Now, jumping time, that's, uh, okay, let's say delta t is uh, just the jumping time. So, the, 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 the theory, uh, so, so, random walk is very simple. Every particle stay on this uh, grid point, and every jumping time, everybody jumps to the right or left with the same probability, half and half. That's uh, randomness. So, Okay, then what is the flux? Okay. So if we measure the flux, let's capi let capital U is the particle number of particle at the at the point x i. Then half of them move to right. So I want to check the flux across this middle point. So half of them m move to the right, and uh, the time for this time amount, delta t. So this is the flux going in this direction. Now, u x i plus 1 and 2 delta t. So half of them, half of the particles are here going this one. OK, now we subtract. So this is a net flux. OK. And then, also, then this capital U is the number. I'm interested in the density. So if that's the number of a particle, then density is delta x times little u x i. So this is the density. Okay, this is the this interval minus delta. So let, let let's write it in this way. Now my there's two delta t at point x i. Now delta x u at divided by 2 delta t at x i plus 1. Okay. Okay, this is the flux. Now we can approximate this one using derivatives. How to do that? Divide this one by x i minus x i. Okay. Then multiply the same thing. That's it. The delta x. But this is negative, so we have to put minus sign here. Okay, now we can see that this one is approximated by this in this way, delta x. Now, now this is exactly this is approximate. So derivative is approximation of this. So delta x times u divided by two delta t and the derivative. So this is the flux. Now if delta x, delta t, so in this, that that's a constant, then this, they are coming out. So this one is minus delta x squared over 2 delta t u sub x. Now in multidimensional case, okay, we can, instead of this, we can have gradient of u. So this is exactly this. Now that's it for dimension 1, so if dimension is 2, then you have 2n. For example, if dimension is 2, 
there are other grids and you have the particle in this point have option to moving right, left, up and down. That's four. Th six dimension, three dimension, two more. So that's why we have uh, so, so this is the way. Okay, that's one thing. So okay, this Einstein's theory completely gives the physics of this. Now, that that is, uh, but here what, what I'm interested in is that that's the first one. So we can model the random movement of this. That's the question one. Now the question two is how to include such a motility change. Now suppose this random walk is not constant. Delta x, delta t don't need to be constant. Then how to model that? that that's the question. But let's, for, for example, the interesting case is 1856. Carl Ludwig. Okay, what he found? What he found is this. It's same, same situation over there. There is water. Now salt was there. Now you, if you wait for a long time, then salt is constant. Density is constant. Now after that, heat this part so that this part is hot. Heat this part. This part is cold. Then, even if it, in the beginning if the well, concentration of the salt was a constant, but if you give this kind of temperature gradient, that means it has a hot, it's a cold, right? Then what happened? The, the, then the Carl Ludwig found that salt, there are more salt here, there are less salt here. Okay. So salt gradient, so, so concentration of the salt makes some gradient here, high, here is low. Okay. And also, so Ludwig also found that this kind of thing in a, in a different sense. For example, Ludwig's case, this is Ludwig but Zore. Zore also did similar thing like, but different situation. Here, suppose, we have alcohol and water with the same amount and then they are mixed and then put the temperature gradient and then they also separate it. Okay, this kind of thing. Then definitely if you use this, this flux, that never explains that. Okay, so what they did is this. So what, so, so what people do is this put the flux. So probably they think, okay, this one is uh, the gradient of U. Now they found that in this situation particle move in the opposite direction of the temperature gradient. So let's say temperature gradient. Now what, what is this? Then put U and DT minus. And then people try to find this coefficient. This coefficient is called the thermal diffusivity. Okay? Now, so, so in the here, there is no physics. This is still kind of, now this is a phenomenological explanation. Okay? So, people, so, so this kind of work is called the thermal diffusion. So people tried to develop the physics or theory that explains this kind of thermal diffusion. Uh, and uh, okay, people already know that okay, Einstein's this homogeneous theory does not apply for this case. So a lot of people worked on this, 
And then I'm going to introduce just one, 1928 chapter. So Chapman is an expert on the kinetic theory. And so, 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 he, so, so, after, actually, after Einstein's work, kinetic theory has developed a lot more. And then Chapman and so, used the kinetic theory and tried to explain this thermal diffusion in a molecular level movement. And then somehow he suggested he derived a diffusion flux uh, and this. So diffusivity D goes inside. And if diffusivity D is temperature dependent, then if you split this one, you will get this kind of term. Okay. And his theory is for the gas case. So many people accept his theory as a physics of uh, thermal diffusion for gas case. Okay, also th th there are some other people you know, derive the diffusion, uh, thermal diffusion in a different way. For example, you, you can find uh, this kind of thing or some others. And also there, if we use this relation Then, homogeneous case flux is KBT over 2n pi eta r with a minus sign gradient of u. Now, if a temperature is not constant, they say, some people say, okay, probably this t temperature should be inside. Or somehow, for this. Yet the viscosity is also depending on temperature, also this one should be inside. So people try to develop the theory to explain the, this one. And many people, mostly kinetic theory has been used. Okay. That's uh, one thing. So what I did is some, some kind of uh, experiment. So if you believe, if we be still believe the diffusion is related to random walk, then okay, let's try some other, then, then let's try inhomogeneous random walk. So delta x and delta t don't need to be constant. So it's, for example, like delta x is depending on x. So in different places, uh, work length is different. Now jumping time is also different depending on place. Then if you compute the diffusivity for this case, then that's uh, 80 over 1. That's uh, just a constant. OK? So if you believe this one, or this one, or the fixed law, all case D is now constant, and then steady state should be eventually constant. Okay? So what I did is, okay, we can really do some Monte Carlo simulation in this environment for a long time, and then see what the steady state look like. So then, what I got is uh, not the constant, but this one. Okay, that is not clearly not a constant. Okay. Then, what is the correct diffusion model? And then the, the correct diffusion model is uh, just this. Already th that, that one is uh, already here. Um, okay, 
if delta x and delta t, if they are constant, they come out. If they are not constant, they should stay inside. Okay? And what is this? And here is number two. Okay, two can comes out, but here delta x over delta t. What is that? That's the speed. Okay, speed is also important here. So let's call this whole thing S. Then the, the diffusion flux can be written like this. F equal gradient of S times U. And this S should not come out. Should stay inside. And then minus D over S. So this is the correct diffusion if you consider heterogeneous case. And so what I did is, okay, then in the previous case, delta x and delta t is this one. Now you, you can compute delta x over delta t. Now you can display that one together with this. Then you can exactly, s okay, I, I, I forgot. So, so here what I have to say is, uh, if you ha uh, are in the steady state, your steady state should be proportional to 1 over s. Right? So what I did is, okay, so here compute s and display with this one together with 1 over s with the, with the appropriate normalization. Then you can exactly see that they are exactly matches. Okay? So the, the random walk in a heterogeneous case is explained by this diffusion flux. And this S should be inside. That's, that's the point. Okay, so what I did is, uh, okay, if there's one decay, so let's try to multi decays. Uh, so some other examples, so let's say omega is this. Omega is uh, just this, okay, and then the boundary, I, I, I always use the periodic boundary condition. Now you have delta x, oops. Uh, and on, on this side, on the left side of the origin, delta x and delta t given this way, on the right side, delta x, delta t given this way. Then if you compute the diffusivity on the left hand side, the 0 0.005, right hand side, the still same 0 0.005. So if this is the case that diffusivity is a constant. Now if you measure, check the speed, the speed is not constant. The left hand side speed is 1, right hand side speed is 0 0.2. So if you measure 1 over speed, 1 over s, and then you, you, you can see what the steady state should be if you, if you have that flux. And this is a Monte Carlo simulation. So, so this one is, I have used 120 particles, then, then somehow they are distributed in this way. And then you can see, clearly see that this state state is correct. So this state state is correct. Now if you increase the number of particles, you, you can see that they are converging to this steady state. So you can clearly see that if you increase the number of particles, okay, this one really gives you the correct steady state. Another, another example. Two more examples. So, okay, the delta x is given this way. Now here, delta t is a constant. Then diffusivity is given this. S is given this. That's the second example. Third e example is uh, delta x this, delta t is this. D then diffusivity is a constant. S speed s is uh, something like that. Then numerical simulation. It's uh, so Monte Carlo simulation. So this is a 3D example. So I did the 3D square using the periodic boundary condition. And then they did a lot of uh, random walks and uh, find the steady state. Now this is the theoretical steady state. Now you can see that 
so, so, so since this is a 3D, what I display is just the slice in the middle. And then, and this one is what, three, 33 million particles. So this one is 337 million particles in total. So in that slice, should be, there should be a lot less. But this, uh, but then you can see that the steady state is pretty close to this. Now the, the no error difference is this one, so almost noise. So it, you can see that, that, that even the 3D examples, and, and this is 2D examples. And it, this is 2D example, now, now this steady state, you, 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 you can see that they are converging. So, I, I, now I have very nice understanding of the non-uniform random work. Or, yes. So, so this is the conclu conclusion of the of these two questions. Okay, now we know how to include the motility change. Now I want to go back to my biological models. Okay. Then, so far, a lot of people used the, the linear random diffusion in uh, ecology models and uh, m m many other models. I think I can erase them. Uh, okay, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Before doing that, I want to make some, some conclusion related to the thermal diffusion. So, so, so here, this is Einstein's relation. Now, if we have this, these are all the constant. So basically, speed V is uh, proportional to the square root of the temperature. Right? Okay, so, here, if we rewrite, okay, if you use the product rule, then, then this is written like minus D gradient of U, now minus this one, d over s. Now, so, so you can easily see that if the constant multiplication of the s doesn't make a difference, right? That's cancelled out. So if we just put square root of t in the place of s, you get this one. Now, Gradient of oh, oh. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Now this t is uh, s is t to the one over two. Then this now times u now t to the uh, one over two to negative 1 over 2 gradient of t. Or you can write this minus t gradient of u. Now, oh yeah, 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 so, so, so this one is uh, Well, this is 1 over s, right? This is 1 over s. So this is t to the t over s squared, but s squared is t squared. 
a key, so to gradient of t. So it say, okay, this one is the thermal diffusivity. Okay. Now I want to return to the this uh, ecology problem. Do you have a question so far? Okay. For the linear, so, 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 I'm going in, in, in the middle, of, I'm going to explain you why, how I started, started to think about this. So, first, Linear diffuser. Let's say U is the population density. Population density of a species. And in, and in this case, M, M, actually M is corresponding to R in the Professor Mimura's talk. But in this, the difference is here, this M is not constant. M is a function. And uh, okay, you, you can think of this one as a as a like a distribution of a food. Okay, then for the single species case, division the logistic model is given like uh, m minus u. Now I want to put diffusivity u and with uh, d constant. Okay, this is the case with a single species case. Now, suppose there are two, two species, something, something like this. Now, this u is one, one species, this is another one. Now, in this right-hand side, the coefficient is chosen in a in a very simplest way, like uh, here, one one everything is one one. So in terms of this uh, logistic part, U and V has no difference; they are identical. And the only difference is D one and D two. Now let's say D two is uh, bigger, D one is smaller. That means uh, this uh, V is a faster diffuser. They are move more actively. Now, th this little u, they move slowly. Okay? Now they are competing. So since this uh, reaction part is exactly identical, the only difference, the difference will be made only by the difference of diffusivity. And the reason we consider this one is to understand the role of diffusivity better. And the boundary condition is Neumann. Okay, this initial condition. This uh, kind of equation is what we saw just before. Now, so actually this one, uh, so, so many, many, uh, uh, three years ago, oh, Professor Weiming asked me a question. That, okay, they are competing in this way. Then which one will win? So I just thought that, okay, if you move fast, it, there should be an advantage. But the result was, not that. I was wrong. The slower diffuser prevail. So that's the theorem of, it's in 1998, and this theory says that this faster diffuser eventually extinct, extinguished, and the slower diffuser prevails. Okay. So it's somehow, the, the, the main reason for that is that the resource distribution M does not change in time. Okay, so if you have faster diffusion, okay, that doesn't help. Okay. okay so this is a simulation. So in, in this situation, 
this uh, red one is the faster diffuser, the blue one, or, and this one is the slower diffuser. They arrived in the same area, and then now they are growing. And so, so this faster diffuser has advantage in, the, in this uh, stage, they grow fast. Because uh, they, they are faster, they move, move first, they, they take the land first, they grow first. Now, slow diffuser is still small population. But this is time scale over 40, but if you consider a lot longer time, then eventually the slower diffuser prevails and the faster diffuser extinguished. Okay, so theory is correct, but somehow I was not happy about uh, th that situation. So what I thought is that the, the, the first slide, or, or third slide, if you are starved, you will increase your motility. So that's that what it happened. Then I thought that if you have no food and then, then you move faster, that should be the advantage. Okay? So what I considered is uh, this model. Instead of this, Okay, starvation. Driven diffusion. So what I did first is, okay, let's consider some, some satisfaction measure. Satisfaction to the environment. So let's say, in this, in this situation, very simple, S equal M over U. Okay, for, for, for example, for this model, S equal M over U. So, that means if S, okay. So, and I considered some alpha, depending on S. So this one is let uh, H, let this is L, if S is less than 1, if S is bigger than 0. Okay, now H means high, L means low, so H is bigger than L, and both of them are positive. Okay, so, I'm oh, sorry. So if S is less than 1, what that mean? If it's S is less than, if this is less than 1, then M is small, U is big, so small, little amount of food, a lot of people to live. And so, okay, so that's a not so happy, happy situation. So if they are not so satisfied, they increase their motility. So, so this will be our motility, or diffusivity. They increase it. If they are very happy, a lot of food just stay there, and that's L. Okay, so this one. Then I consider the competition of between these two. UT is okay, the, the, the still the, the same thing, like uh, D, okay, so it's here, plus U, plus U times M minus U minus V. Now let's put here, this is slower diffuser, let's put L. Now let's have V. Now, what should be this diffusivity if you move in, in this kind of way? So, well, before I realizing this kind of thing, I used just the fixed law. If you use the fixed law, then that is a divergence of alpha gradient of u plus v m minus u minus v. Okay, so at the time I, what I thought is if we com compete these two, then, prob then numerical simulation will show that this one is extinguished and this will prevail. That was my first guess. So the, the, the reason is, okay, there is no food, they are moving, moving fast and looking for food, hard, and a lot of food just stay there. Then, then 
I thought that situation is this one. But no, that's not. Right? So, so I compute this one, then, then let's see the, what happened. For that case, numerical simulation is this. That's the slower diffusion is, 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 is blue, and the nonlinear diffusion is this red. Okay, it, in the beginning it looked like a nonlinear diffusion. This V looks fine, but if you wait a little bit, then, okay, it, it, you can immediately see that this U prevails. Okay, so, for, so, so this is just a distribution. I just uh, display their distribution in all different times. So, so that, that, that's these two pictures. And just look at that one, then, then okay. Still, slower diffuser prevails. Okay, so you can c clearly see that this is not that situation. And from, from this one, what you have to see is, uh, if this is the correct diff diffusion fl flux, then the important thing is the one inside, S, not the outside. Why? This inside one decides the st what? steady state. Okay? This one decides how fast, how, uh, how, how fast does the solution converges to that steady state. Okay? Okay, so, so in, uh, in, in, in doing this kind of work, somehow I found that so, so if you have A divergence, B gradient of C, U. Somehow these two are very closely related. They are all places the same row. Now this one is a lot nicer. Th this one makes less difference, but these two make bigger differences. Okay, for example, and Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, let's forget that. So, what I did is, okay. Uh, instead of, so, my V, the facility of my, my V should be this kind of thing. Uh, let's, uh, I'm using this, it, this is the capital S. Or, or V, okay, let's use V, velocity. Now, gradient V. Now, you, oh, I already used V, so S. And S. Okay, this is my, my the, I'm claiming this is the correct diffusion. Now, this plays a more important role now let's just put the S equal just one. So I want to forget about this one for, for now. I want to focus on this. And if this is the speed, then okay, let this one be my speed. Then my equation is this, Vt equal Laplacian <coughs> alpha u plus alpha, I'm oh, sorry, v, v, I'm so sorry. V, V, now V, M minus U minus V. Okay, this is the equation for my V. Then, what happened? Okay, so yeah, this is the case. So, so I put the alpha, that alpha, inside here. And and uh, in, th in this case, okay, S is uh, M over U plus V because there are two species. Now, simply so, so rewrite this part, then using the product rule, this one is split in the, into several parts. And this first part is identical, oh, I'm, 
I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's too small, right? And there are three terms. Now, if you the last term is a gradient of m, that is very like advection. Now, this first term is a gradient of u times uh, v. This one looked like cross diffusion. And this one, v times v, that looked like a self diffusion. So, so what I believe is that because of this kind of relation, the cross diffusion theory was uh, successful. And uh, I think the theory of the cross diffusion thing is still phenomenological way. But this one explains that. Okay, wait a second. Okay. So, what I did is, okay, I did a computation with using this V. And uh, in the computation, my domain is from 0 to 1. And one dimensional case. Now my M is this. This is my function for M. So there are small amount of food inside, a lot of food in, in this place. Now I competed these two species. Then this is just the, the, the first law is total population. And for, for different cases, this one is the distribution of two species at the steady state. Okay? Okay, I, I feel really sorry about that. I see that that's too small. I'm going to project that one. Probably it will take time. So there are two, two examples. And in this example, H is, is okay, okay. So the scale is important. So H is a three. L is 2. Now the other species, I gave diffusivity 1 here. Now here is, okay, this one is coming. The only difference is age. Mm -hmm. The only difference is age. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So, what is D? This D is the diffusivity of the slower diffuser. So 0 0.0010001. I change this ratio. Uh, L is uh, always 2, okay. Yeah. And I change the H. Now, you can see that in, in this example, slower diffuser prevails. Okay, still. So that, that, that means uh, even if you have a motility difference here, this one is still too slow. So this, this one prevails. Now here, instead of uh, decreasing H, uh, increase H. So, so now motility difference has been somehow increased. Okay, then this one gives the more advantage to the one moving according to starvation driven diffusion. Then, okay, now this one, red one, this motility, uh, starvation driven diffusion one, start to survive and stay something like that. Okay, now increase it even more, then slower diffuser extinguished, and this one prevails. Now, here you, you can see some coexistence in, in, in this example. Now, if you see the Profile, okay, the extinguished, extinguished, okay, that's fine. But the coexistence. So you, you can see that in the middle, 
they are less slower diffuser. Now here, here somehow they are distributed in this way. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, I, I'm sorry. I was a little bit hurry. I should. This is my 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 last slide. I should have some, some other examples too. But uh, but I'm going to just talk of in my 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 words. What happens if you increase H even more? Then if you increase H even more, then from a certain stage, both of them, this is even the slower diffuser, survive. There is a coexistence zone. And if you increase this one even more, then slower diffuser can be even the population of a slow diffuser can be even bigger than the the other one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, for example. My M is uh, this. Let's this value equal 1, this value equal, say, 5. Then there are 5 times more food here than, than here. And if you increase this one too much, high means, so you usually here in this zone, S is less than 1. So motility of this one becomes a H. Motility in this area becomes a L. So, so this is bad zone, so you better to give up this one and co co go to the, this place. However, if you increase this one too much, then uh, there is some food here, but he, what? give up this area completely if H is too big. That gives uh, the other species a chance to survive. So if H is too large, the other one has a chance to survive. Okay, so, so, so. And if the, the example is not, not like this, something like this is a four, 5, here is a 4. Then if H is large, then if you, you move in that, that way, still there are a lot of food, and, but if you give, a, give this place up too easily, then the other species has the more chance to survive in that area. And they can, may have even bigger population. So it seems like, okay, this kind of uh, thing somehow explains the one that um, so when, when I heard about the slow uh, diffuser prevail thing, I thought that this one is not so somehow strange. Now if we understand that this diffu diffusion better, then we can somehow answer that kind of uh, weird situation. And uh, actually there is one thing, one more thing, I'm sorry, about uh, to mention. So in many cases, if there are a lot of food, they move slowly. And uh, I think in, the, in, in, in Professor Mimura's example of the fingering, like this. And uh, this area, there are more food. So species in this area has more food, so they don't need to move. So they are piling up in, in this region. They don't want to move. And uh, about the, the ones in this area, they are hungry. There are food here, uh, but, but, but there's no food here, so they should move more actively in, in this region than this region. Now somehow in the case in this region, 
now they are starved too much, so they, they have no energy to move. And then, okay, so, so somehow, that's it. Thank you. Can you show the ego